Connecticut Voice Out Loud is proudly sponsored by Middlesex Health, Foxwoods Resort Casino, and Saybrook and Marina Spa. Welcome to Connecticut Voice Out Loud, the first and only show in the state focusing on the LGBTQ community and the inspiring stories they share. I'm your host, Hilary Russo. The great Roman poet Virgil once said, the greatest wealth is health. When we take care of our mind, body, and spirit, finding that true state of being could be much more rewarding. It could be anything from a good workout or a trusted support network to reading a good book or even a night out on the town. Whatever it is, it's all part of living well. Our first story begins on that road towards healthy living. We've all heard that saying, no pain, no gain. But getting in shape can be an intimidating experience, especially when you're transgender. Don Ennis takes us to one Manchester gym that's doing some heavy lifting to ensure everyone feels welcome. Kristen and Colleen Mastriani own Move Strong Gym here in Manchester. They're a lesbian couple, and they say their gym is a no judgment gym because nobody wants to be judged when they're working out. You told Jane Lattice that it's very important that you be out to your clients because if you get judged by them, then they're gonna judge anybody. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that. Well, I just want a, you know, a community where everybody just supports everybody else. So I just assume that I'm kind of the first line. So if somebody has an issue with me, then they're likely going to, you know, have an issue with somebody else for God knows what reason. I cater to people that uh, want to be strong, that want to um, work hard, that don't want to have pain, that a lot of those kind of things. So it's just... Everybody that comes in here is treated like a human being, like nobody's different than anybody else, and that's just kind of the way it is. You know, I have a group in the morning, a group in the evening, and there's one guy and a bunch of women, and another guy and a bunch of women, and he's treated the same, and he looks at them like they're they're monsters, like that they do all the, and they, they go, he goes around and they tell, like, you should see what the girls at my gym do, you know, it's, so it's just like, all in all, it's just a really supportive, like nobody cares here, like nobody cares what you do, like, it's just support each other. Well, I mean, I met Kristen, like I said, in middle school, so I, you know, I, I can't say that it was love at first sight at that point. We did a process called shared conception, um, which when we went to the CARS, the Center for Advanced Reproductive Services, they had a bunch of different options that you could do, and this one kind of struck us because it was really important that we both played a role um, in it, and what shared conception is, is, is it's one of the partner's um, eggs that are used while the other partner is the one who actually carries the baby and brings it to conception. I just think that there just needs to be just more kindness in the world, and if we can contribute to creating a human that's, you know, down to earth and kind to others and just kind of, you know, bring it back, start kicking it old school again, that, <laughs> That would be awesome, and you know, we, we're pretty adventurous people. We snowboard, we hike, you know, I skateboard and surf, and you know, we do all sorts of, she's an artist, we just do a lot of like cool stuff, and I just think that, I don't know, if I was a kid, I'd probably want to be doing this stuff too. She just wants everybody to be safe and strong. Colleen's freakishly strong at baseline, so I, I didn't have any problem with her continuing, and I think everybody should be active during pregnancy. A lot of times at the beginning of pregnancy, you have people who have had a lot of unhealthy behaviors and all of a sudden they get religion. So I think they need to be careful and they need to work with somebody like Kristen who's gonna make sure that they're safe. Exercise counteracts muscle loss from the aging process. It not only builds physical health, but mental health as well. It contributes to happiness. That's especially important to transgender women like me. Curly. What are you doing out here? You're training for something? You're running? What is this? Well, I've got a few races coming up. I just got off one. I just, I recently did the Hartford Half Marathon. It was fun. It was pretty fast. It hurt, but it was worth it. I, I love running. I love cycling. I love compete. I love being in sports. I played softball this past spring. I enjoy sports. Sports is my life. When you've worked out in the gym, what's happened there? Have you found that people accept you as a woman? I found it's really uncomfortable and right now with a few exceptions I kind of avoid the gyms Why right is that? now because because just the just the chance of something going just going awry is is something that I worry about I mean it's you really have I really you have to vet workout places couldn't you just go work out as a man 
in the men's gym. Why? I don't do anything, quote unquote, as a man and haven't for quite some time. Why do I need to be something other than what I am just to do what I love doing? And also keeping myself fit and keeping myself in shape. To me, it's all, the, it's all a part of the same system. It's all life. I mean, I didn't give up the things I love to do. I'm certainly not giving up the things I love to do because I had to go and pursue my truth. That, that's what this comes down to for me. Work, I mean, working out, playing sports, competing, those things are, those things are a part of me. It's like, I mean, that's like, it's like oxygen to me. How can I, how, how can I give those back? How can I not do things that I love just because I decided it's time to be who I am and it's time to pursue your truth? You can't, you can't do that. That would be like cutting off my right arm. For Connecticut Voice Out Loud, I'm Dawn Ennis. When we come back, from the body to the mind, you'll meet two doctors who are allies for mental health in the transgender community. Stay with us. As Connecticut's first Mayo Clinic Care Network member, we're bringing the world's most advanced treatments, knowledge, and research much closer to home for you. Middlesex Health, the smarter choice for care. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Henry. Tyler Henry, the Hollywood medium, is bringing his live show, An Evening of Hope, Healing, and Closure to you. With his passing, his situation seems tragic, too. I'm seeing Robin Williams for some reason. Oh, my God, that's his wife's name, Robin Williams. Don't miss Tyler Henry, the Hollywood medium. Saturday, June 13th, Grand Theater at Foxwoods Resort Casino. Tickets at foxwoods.com, ticketmaster.com, and by phone. He definitely has a gift. It was amazing. It was so spot on. If you're looking to start a family, talk to us. We're the Center for Advanced Reproductive Services. For the past 35 years, we've been providing expert fertility care with over 100 dedicated staff members focused on your dream. Since we opened our doors, we've celebrated the births of over 13,000 babies and still counting. Begin your journey with just one call. 844-HOPE-IVF, yukonfertility.com. It's a personal journey that comes with many ups and downs. And for the transgender community, finding true health and happiness can be even more challenging. But two doctors are making it their mission to create a positive path for their patients mindfully. I had a chance to find out more about the work they do and the people they serve. It's not uncommon to see them walking the halls together, and for good reason. Since its inception in 2016, the transgender medicine program at Middlesex Health is close to their hearts. And for Dr. Jeffrey Shelton and Dr. Angel Rubin, the mental well-being of their patients is priority number one. Because of the amount of stress that people who are transgender experience, because of the discrimination they, they experience, they do have a higher rate of mental illness, but it's not because of their gender identity. One of the major things we do here in behavioral health is we get people in the door. Mm -hmm. So people will reach out to us and say, you know, I'm in the process of coming out or um, I'm just needing some sort of support. And I think that we're that first step to helping them, connecting mm -hmm. them with resources um, and just getting them support that support covers a wide range of services, including making complex care decisions to help patients cope with emotional issues, many of which arise not only during transition, but before and after. And the dedication of the doctors and their staff doesn't end there. In addition to being advocates for those in the program, Middlesex is making a conscious effort for more community involvement. Their hope? To build a stronger sense of awareness and inclusion outside these walls. And inside, individual sessions give patients a safe place to share without judgment. And group sessions provide them a chance to connect with others, realizing they're not alone. But Rubens says there is an additional level of healing provided that is crucial for everyone's success. Having a space for the family members, the friends to come in, to, to talk about their experience because it's a transition for them too. They're having to adjust. And there's research to show that for trans youth who have family that are supportive of their gender identity, their rates of depression and anxiety are the same as mm -hmm. their, um, their peers. Mm -hmm. But for those that do not have that support, their rates of depression and anxiety and suicide are much greater. 
According to the most recent study done by the National Center for Transgender Equality, the trans community has the highest risk demographic in the U.S. for suicide. The findings paint a troubling picture of the health of many people in this group. A staggering 39% of respondents experienced serious psychological distress in the month prior to completing the survey, compared with only 5% of the U.S. population. Among the starkest findings, 40% of respondents have attempted suicide in their lifetime, compared to 4.6%, making the suicide rate among the trans community nearly nine times higher. It's just letting someone, you know, believe that I, I see you, I hear you, I believe you, and um, my goal is to support you and not judge you or question who you are, but just validate mm -hmm. who you are. We have been trying to include more and more transgender people in the program mm -hmm. that as much as Angel and I are, are advocates and we so strongly believe in the work that we do, we don't have lived experience. Mm -hmm. And it's so important, I think, for transgender people to have a voice. Mallory Spencer is one of those voices. After much curiosity, she entered the program in 2017. And while Spencer says it's one of the best decisions she's ever made, she still struggles mentally with her past and her present. I was subconsciously taught the lesson that talking about or showing anything about my gender identity will get me hurt. Unfortunately, Mallory is one of many who face that fear of being hurt every day, or even worse. An advocacy study done by the Human Rights Campaign shows that 2017 was one of the deadliest documented years of fatal shootings and violent killings against transgender people, predominantly trans women. 2018 numbers were not much better, with a reported 26 deaths. And so far in 2019, while the number is lower, 19 violent deaths are still 19 too many. That recognizability of being trans puts a target on our backs. Mm -hmm. That kind of uh, stress is something that I deal with that, that's um, helped through Dr. Shelton. Dr. Shelton and Dr. Rubin both agree that seeing patients go through the program is a privilege, but the journey, the true recovery process, that's empowering. Do you feel that you learn from your patients? Every day. It's my greatest training. People mm -hmm. will say, you know, what trainings have you, have you gone to? I'll say, well, I've, I've done this, this, and this, but I've sat in the room. And that is, mm -hmm. that is the greatest experience. If there's a take-home message, is, 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 that is our goal, is to, to witness who someone is, mm -hmm. validate that, and... And walk with them. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was incredibly empowering. I was holding my head up higher. I was walking taller. I felt like... The world is just my runway, and I was just ready to conquer it. The transgender medicine program at Middlesex Health serves more than 900 people in the state. To find out more about the program, visit their website at middlesexhealth.org. Coming up, he's making an offer you can't refuse. In a new book, a major figure in Connecticut's LGBTQ community shares more on a true Hollywood legend. At Middlesex Health, we're doing more to make healthcare better for you, with more personal attention to get you back to your best, and more of today's most innovative, life-saving treatments. We're bringing more second chances to communities throughout Central Connecticut and the shoreline, and finding more ways to treat every member of your family like a member of ours. Together, it all adds up to the new Middlesex Health, today's smarter choice for care. Lindsey Sterling Warmer in the Winter Christmas Tour. December 12th, 7 p.m. Grand Theater at Foxwoods Resort Casino. Celebrate the holiday spirit with an electrifying and visually stunning show. Tickets on sale now at foxwoods.com or ticketmaster.com. Spend the holidays with internationally renowned violinist, dancer, artist, Lindsey Sterling. The holiday album Warmer in the Winter, available everywhere. 
Come for the sunset and stay for the sunrise. Experience the best in waterfront tranquility at Saybrook Point Inn, Marina and Spa. Enjoy water views, luxurious accommodations, and outdoor dining with a marina view. Join us on the terrace for live summer music or spend the day pampering yourself at our full service spa. Check out midweek special packages at saybrook.com and book now. Saybrook Point Inn, your place for rest and relaxation. Your seaside staycation awaits. Welcome back to Connecticut Voice Out Loud. When it comes to advocacy, educator, author, and historian William Mann is no stranger to the LGBTQ scene in the state. But a recent book by Mann has him opening up a new door on one of the greatest American actors of all time. Frank Rizzo caught up with the prolific author at the home of another literary legend. Here's that story from the Mark Twain House in Hartford. Will, you've been involved in the politics and culture of Connecticut's gay community since the late 80s. What made you come out, step out, and take a more prominent position here in the community? You know, Connecticut was the place where I came out when I found myself. I mean, when I moved to Hartford, that was the moment I said, yeah, I'm gay and I need to be out about it. And I, and I credit that really to the people that I knew, um, the activists that I saw working for the gay rights bill, hate crimes laws. Um, and they were, they're still heroes of mine, some of those people. And if I name one, I'm going to miss somebody else. So I'm not going to name anybody. Sure. But in fact, these people um, showed me how to live a life in, of authenticity and integrity. Was it difficult to write about gay life in Hollywood, especially old Hollywood? Or did you find that people were at an age when you were there, when they were willing to talk about what life was like then, and in fact wanted to be part of the historic record. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. You know, that was the best part of doing that research, was that at the time there were still enough survivors of the, of the classic Hollywood era still alive. They're all gone now. Yeah. Because I was, these are people, men and women that I talked to in the 90s and the early 2000s, who were in their 80s, 90s. And they told me stories that really got me to understand what life was like in, 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 in surprising ways. I mean, it wasn't always as oppressive as we, as we mm -hmm. like to imagine it was. Sometimes they actually had, some, they had more freedoms in their, their way than other people did. I think what surprised me was how authentic he was. I mean, my impression of Marlon Brando before I started this book was he's kind of this crazy um, eccentric who just was you doing everything for attention. But in fact, he was, he was living a life that was authentic and, and um, truthful and he refused to play the Hollywood game. And, and that, it wasn't just being a diva, it was because he was calling out Hollywood on its artificiality, its phoniness, its, its, um, um, uh, you know, its sexism, its, its racism. I mean, he was calling out Hollywood's racism and in, indeed American racism way before it was fashionable to do so. So I think learning that he was everything that he said he was, that's really what surprised me. He wasn't, he wasn't doing it for publicity. In your biography, you talk about Brando's affairs and relationships with women, but he had close, sometimes intimate relationships with men too, and it was something he actually acknowledged in, uh, in late in life. He did. He, he gave an interview to a French magazine, and I got the actual uh, magazine to make sure he actually said it, and he did. Um, he said, like many men, I have had homosexual uh, experiences, um, relationships, I think he actually mm -hmm. said. And he said, and I'm not ashamed of that. You know, he was, he was pansexual before it was even a term. But uh, he was a sexually vigorous person. Oh, that definitely describes him, sexually vigorous. I mean, he actually also uses the term uh, a sexaholic before it was invented. Uh. He actually said that sometime in the 1970s to his secretary. I think I'm a sexaholic. And he was. And, he w and it was, goes back to his traumatic childhood where right. he was using sex to try to um, fill a need that um, his parents had, had never given him. The Contender, the story, story of, of Marlon, Marlon Brando. Brando. Yes, yes. And is it in stores now? It is. It's in stores as of this week. So um, I'm, I'm very excited. It seems to uh, initially get, begin a good response. And I read some of the early reviews. Yes, very, very yeah, nice. I'm very gratified by that. Terrific. Dancing, dining, and a little luck. A trip to Foxwoods includes all of this and more. Jackie Post visited the resort casino and found a whole world of fun that makes everyone feel welcome. 
We're here with Monique Sebastian from Foxwoods. Monique, thanks so much for having Hi. Connecticut Voice Out Loud here at Foxwoods. Yeah. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah. I so appreciate that. So we're, we're excited to be here. So there is so much happening here at Foxwoods. Tell me a little bit about generally what is here and what you offer. Sure. So as you know, we're the largest casino in the Northeast, over 9 million square feet. And under that square feet, um, we have 35 dining offerings, we have two luxurious spas, we have some great retail, we have nightlife and lounges and just something for everyone. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things you have to offer for the LGBT community. Sure. Um, I know you have a lot of shows coming yes, up, so let's talk about those shows and what do you have to offer? So um, coming into November, we have so much and then obviously in December, it just keeps getting better and better. Um, a couple of my favorites that I think everyone would like would be like Brian McKnight. Um, you know, the sultry voice of Brian is hitting our Fox Theater in December. Uh, we also have one of my personal favorites, Adam Lambert. December 15th, I mean, who doesn't know him from American Idol? He's just really a household name, you know, nowadays. Uh, in addition to Adam Lambert, we have Celtic women that are also coming in November. Um, we also have Alanis Morissette that's coming in December on December 7th. So just a wide variety of entertainment that, you know, hits home and that we, we love to have everybody come out and take a part of. And now is the time to buy those tickets, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Now, like go right now to <laughs> foxwoods.com and buy them. Um, I cannot believe it, but the holidays are just yeah, around the corner. I and I know you have a lot going on we here. We love the holidays here at Foxwoods. So whether you're coming in just to do some shopping or you really want to plan something, we definitely have both for you. So we have some great shopping in our Tanger outlets. And then in addition to that, well, we're going to be setting up gingerbread houses all across the property and these oversized ornaments and this reindeer that now we are selfie crazy. Everything gets posted on Instagram and it's really some Instagrammable worthy moments for here. And then we're having two of my favorite, other favorite things to do and that's drink. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Who doesn't love to drink? My kind of girl. <laughs> so in November, we're having our beer fest on November 23rd. So, fun. so you get to come in and sample some of the ale that we're going to have in our ballroom. And then you get to vote to which one is your favorite. And then that winner and comes and we're going to stock their IPA here in Foxwoods. And then as we get deeper into December, we're going to have our 12 bars of Christmas bar crawl to where you can win gift cards and overnight stays and experience all these fun drinks. Really great for a group of friends, a group of girls, a group of guys, men, women. Grand I've even That's seen grandparents come too, so it's for everyone. That sounds awesome. Get on your favorite Christmas sweater yes, maybe. And we do have an ugly sweater contest. Ugly sweater contest, we do, contest. We do, I like that. We do, we do. That's awesome. So you have so many places to eat, to dance, to right. do whatever. What are some of the places that the LGBTQ community would enjoy? Well, I think that when we look at, you know, what we have to offer, if you like really high end, obviously View 24 is a really nice restaurant. It has a great view. They do have Saturday and Sunday brunch. You know, mainstream and more fun and hip and cool, we have uh, Red Lantern, which is Asian fusion food, and Scorpion Bar, which is like a Mexican cantina. We have Guy Fieri's here, which is also fun. My favorite? Sugar Factory. Okay. So, more drinks. <laughs> we need to hang out. <laughs> and then what we are going to start doing beginning December 1st is our day party brunch, which happens in our Central Lounge. And everybody loves to day party. So mimosas and bellinis and French toast and steak and eggs and with the DJ, some really cool bottle service. It's just really amazing. It's one of actually my fun events that we do for the winter. That sounds awesome. Nothing like a little day drinking to get yes. the party started. <laughs> well, there is so much going on here. Where can people go to get a list of events or to find out about the shows or whatever they want to take part in? Very simple, foxwoods.com. Awesome, easy peasy. Easy we easy. appreciate Thank your time you so today, much. Thanks Thank so much. You. Thank you. Finally, on Connecticut Voice Out Loud, a story about family. They come in all shapes and sizes, but when difficulties arise, one place is stepping in to make the dream of parenthood come true. Ashley Cole takes us to one Farmington clinic that's making a difference. 
Connecticut Voice Out Loud headed to the Center for Advanced Reproductive Services in Connecticut to find out how they're making families' dreams come true every day. Well, I always say that I feel really fortunate as having um, had a business degree and a business background to find a career that's really become a vocation um, where every day I get to apply what I know about business to um, the health care of helping people to build families. And, you know, 20 years later, how people define families and what families look like are very different than what we typically saw in 1999. I mean, one of the things that we um, really are proud of and love to be a part of are having people come in, whether they are um, LGBTQ or single straight people or heterosexual couples, and tell us what their vision of a family looks like mm -hmm. so that we can then walk through with them uh, what viable clinical options are available to them. Maybe some there's some hesitation. There's couples out there who aren't sure. You know, they're not sure, they're scared, they're intimidated. What would you say to them? Well, I would say that knowledge is power. And I think that it is a truthful statement that the LGBTQ community has oftentimes felt marginalized with regard to health care. Mm -hmm. And I can assure everyone that um, the Center for Advanced Reproductive Services is a very friendly place for all people. We are really proud that we have been at the forefront of treating LGBTQ people um, since I think the earliest inseminations were occurring in 1983. If you were to give an overview, what can they expect? Well, the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to sit with a doctor and the doctor is going to ask them, you know, what does a family look like to you? You know, what is, what are the important elements to you? So, um, for instance, if it is a lesbian couple, sometimes it's as simple as donor sperm with insemination, which is a very low tech procedure that can happen. Other times they want to do something what we, what we call as shared conception, where one of the female partners is providing the eggs, they're going to have um, a donor uh, sperm source, and then we're going to create embryos, and the second partner will carry the embryos. So the partner carrying does not have a genetic relationship to the embryo and the child that she will give birth to, but she has a real strong biological connection. Absolutely. So both parts of the couple feel really involved. Another recent development over the last few years is the evolution of transgender care. And um, we have for years treated adult transgender people, but now we're actually seeing more and more um, adolescents who are coming in with their parents and uh, want information about fertility preservation as part of their journey. How do you keep yourself present in the community? Well, one of the things that we try to do, um, especially with the LGBTQ community, is go to them. And so to go to people where they're most comfortable. So to that end, we've partnered with the New Haven Pride Center. We were a sponsor of New Haven Gay Pride. And so by having a presence in uh, those areas, we're able to get patients the information and access that they need. For more information on the Center for Advanced Reproductive Services, you can visit them online at yukonfertility.com. And if you would like to learn more about any of these stories or have a story of your own to share, visit our website at ctvoice.com and make sure to connect with us on social media too. We hope to see you soon with more from the incredible people that make Connecticut proud. I'm Hillary Russo. Be well.